good afternoon and welcome to today's edition of Generation Nest TV show on Orient TV channel 59 and on Star Times channel 113. My name is Esther Andrew Macho and as you know, what we do on Generation Nest, we talk about issues that concern the young person, any issue at all. Today, we're discussing um, agriculture and uh, in the studio, I have a young man, very vibrant young man at that, who is a cucumber farmer. Like, you'd be wondering, cucumber farming? Let's just get to meet him. Mr. Kingsley, your work, William. Sorry, welcome to today's edition. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so can we get to know you? Yeah, oh, my name is uh, Comrade uh, Williams, aka Chibuzo. Mm -hmm. I am from Omohiaku in Inkopala, local government area of Imo State. Mm -hmm. I'm a graduate of Federal Polytechnic Nekede and also a graduate of Imo State University where I studied uh, business administration, management, and business management, respectively. Okay. Whatever you studies, that's what we're doing today. Today we are discussing cucumber farming. So as a young person in Imo State, you understand. So how did you venture into cucumber farming? Why did you do that? Yeah, I started cucumber farming like, uh, like a joke. Huh. <laughs> a friend of mine um, introduced me to this business. So at first, was thinking that it's not gonna work because I've never seen people planting cucumber in most state. So I was thinking that the, the business is solely for the northerners. So I was introduced to this business. I picked interest. Despite the challenges, family, you know, mm. people didn't support the idea. The Are you challenge. serious? Yes. Why? <laughs> So people were expecting me to at least to get a white collar job mm. for myself and uh, at the time I had to venture into farming so it was against people's uh, expectation. So how did you push forward? Yeah, because I started small, mm -hmm. I started small, I started uh, on a plot of land where I planted cucumber worth of 10,000 naira. Then after that first plantation I harvested bountifully. That was how I started. Okay, you know, you've gone to high, you, you got money and all that. What about the knowledge? Okay, somebody introduced you to cucumber farm. Did you just jump on it? No. How did you get the required knowledge to successfully plant cucumber in an area like Imo State? Okay, I attended training. I was mentored. That's what we call on-the-job training. Okay. On-the-job training. Mm -hmm. Then while I was doing it, I was tutored step by step. Mm. How to do it? Okay, before you now eventually start doing it. Yes. Okay, so you said you started with one plot of land, and at the time you got a bountiful harvest. So, at what point did your family start getting encouraged by it? Okay, immediately after the first harvest, you no, know, mm. because um, the whole thing, uh, the people on the social media, mm. when I first of all. A, a little video about what I do. Mm. So people were amazed. People started encouraging me, phone calls, text messages. Mm. I started getting moral support from people. I think my family killed him. Okay, by force. So you see, <laughs> even if they don't encourage you, just start. When you're ready, when you start, when they see the result, they will kill him. Okay, you know why I'm talking about Kuba? It's as if it's a justice, you know, one sweet business that just goes, pyam, you understand? Yeah. Just flies. Does it mean um, there, are, there are no challenges you face planting cucumber in Imo State? Ah, a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. Like Not A lot of challenges. Uh, one, you, you can talk about, uh, you know, cucumber is being characterized by so many steps. Mm -hmm. and, uh, if you are not careful enough, you may miss all the whole processes. Because uh, you are talking about the challenges. Mm -hmm. One, you are aware that we, you know what we mean by uh, factors of production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you talk about uh, money, land, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and labor. Them, yeah, and labor. So before you start up a cucumber farm, you must at least have capital. What kind of? You said ten thousand. Yeah, ten thousand naira is capital. Mm -hmm. It's it's capital. Can ten thousand get a, get you a plot of land? How does it get yours? Yeah, I I have a land. Oh, okay. A kind of communal land. I have a communal land, then I, that's my father's land. Mm -hmm. Then 
I the issue of labor, mm. like the one I did at the first time. So the issue of labor comes in because you have to hire. You are, it's, it's not. It, it's a one-man business, but you need helpers. So you pay them. Mm. So we are in a situation where even a little, you, even if you ask someone to do a little thing for you, you must pay. If if they tell you to do a little thing, what you pay? <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about the issue of labor. Mm -hmm. You need money, then. You talk about the issue of um, kind of paste. Yeah. At, at, at a time, you, you, if you are not carefully enough, you may see strange paste in the farm that may come to destroy your cucumba farm. I think it's one of the challenges. Okay, so basically from you, the challenges in cucumba farming here is just the land, money, labor, paste. Um, see, eh, when I'm talking yeah. about challenges okay. here, eh, I'm talking about real... For instance, there's a young person out there that I heard that they plant cucumber in Imo State. And person's like, okay, so someone can actually plant cucumber in Imo State. Then and the person now wants to, you know, venture into it now, you understand. What do you think might be the challenges that person might face venturing into that business? And how can so that whoever that wants to do it, that wants to get inspired by you can just be prepared as okay, see you. To do this business, look, these are the things I'm going to face. So let me do this so I can conquer it. Can you help us with that? Okay, um, like you've just pointed out, um, there are some challenges. I've made mention of labor, mm -hmm. I've made mention of land, mm -hmm. because we are not talking about someone that wants to venture into Kukumba in a large scale. Whether large or small, any, okay. any scale. Okay. Okay. You can, okay, do you know, can you categorize, like, if you're doing, if you want to venture into Kukumba in a small scale, this is what you're going to face. Then you want to go so big with it, this is what you're going to face. Can you? I want to talk about the large scale. Oh, okay. but that's where you make money. Oh, okay. If you are uh, planting in a small scale, which means <laughs> just maybe for family consumption. Wow, are you serious? Yeah, so when you are um, trying to venture into Kukumba family in a large scale, at least you, like myself, I used... Uh, organic uh, um, fertilizer. I use more of organic okay. fertilizer where I use animal dungs, mm -hmm. I use uh, um, uh, poultry waste. So if you are venturing to large scale, you must be able to have a steady supply of the animal waste. Mm. Of course, of course. So it's a challenge too. But we also buy them. Corner the days when you get things on a platter of gold. Mm. So this time around, even them, they know that they're using it for business. So they sell to you. Yeah. So because uh, I, I don't encourage people to use uh, um, yeah, inorganic fertilizer. Mm. Like Does that have any effect on the food, on the fruits, on the cucumber fruits? Yeah, because uh, some of the inorganic fertilizers mm. can destroy the, the soil. Are you serious? Yeah, they have negative effect on the soil. Uh, I, I think my friend is from the other part of Ngokala. There, you are not allowed to use um, inorganic fertilizer. It, uh, it, it contains chemical substances. So how do they know that you're using organic? Is there a regulator? Is there any way if they just come outside? This land is like there's an inorganic stuff here. Not actually, not actually, because. Uh, um, there is nothing to identify, mm. except maybe someone visit your farm and mm. confirms that you are using organic fertilizer mm. and health-wise too. So mm. the cucumber use um, organic fertilizer. Sometimes people don't prefer it. So people prefer sorry the one produced by the organic. Yes. So we don't get organic. Me. Okay. So now, how do some? Can you give our viewers a step by step? way to conquer some you know you've said it in a broad manner you understand so can you give our viewer a step-by-step -step means of conquering the challenges you know embedded in cooking farm because we want them to venture into it yeah um like i said mm. it may be a one-man business depending the way you look at it but partnering with someone doing cucumber farming kind of 
partnership business mm. is good because uh, um, two good heads are better than one. So when you have a partner, more especially maybe someone that is buoyant, some of these challenges can be conquered because when you have the money, mm. you can assess what do you call it, um, the organic fertilizer or even the inorganic fertilizer, you can assess them. So when you have the money, you can rent larger land if you don't have. Like, is also a problem in my place. Mm. The airport have taken over all our land. So <laughs> it's another problem. Mm. So when you have money, you can, you can as well, um, you can as well kind of um, take other steps, even the area of, uh, even the area of transportation. Even the area of transportation. Transporting even the, um, the, uh, the fertilizers mm. down to your farm. Because assessing them, you, you, you carry them in heaps. Mm. Yes, you carry them in heaps. It's not something like you, you go to the poultry, you fetch a bag of animal waste. You take them in heaps. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about the challenge. You've talked about some of the solution, and your solution is partnering. You said partnership is a solution to most of this problem. Yeah, and commitment. What do you mean by commitment? Commitment. Someone needs to be dedicated. Because I don't advise people to venture into business they do not have passion for, or a mm -hmm. business they do not know anything about. Mm -hmm. So when you are committed, because my, my strength in this business is my commitment. Mm. I am committed, I am dedicated. So at the time, people started calling me a cucumber. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, of course, because I am always there. Because venturing into cucumber farming, you must give cucumber farm proper attention. Are you serious? You must visit your farm every day. Every day. There's nothing like I, I visited it yesterday. You must be there on a regular basis. Is it that regular serious? Basis. Yeah. You must visit your farm. So it's not something you you be in Lagos and you said you are doing cucumber in the east. Someone must be there. Okay, can, okay. What what if you appoint someone? Can't you do it like in proxy or not around? Do not send someone to them? Yes, the person must be there. I mean, your employee mm -hmm. or your laborer mm -hmm. must be there. Too. Wow. Yeah. So commitment is also key. Like it's like commitment is key everywhere. Whether in cucumber farming, in whatever yeah, you're doing. Yeah, commitment, dedication. <laughs> That's serious. Yeah. Dedication. Okay, so let's talk about the you know we talked about challenges and all that. Yeah. If it's not working, I don't think you'll be here, right? Yeah, it's working. It's working. It so work. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know it will work. So can you tell us? Can you tell us um, some of the economic benefits, you understand? Yeah. How um, cucumber farming has benefited you financially, because that's the cucumber, you yeah. understand? Yeah, finance, finance, finance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cucumber has uh, benefited myself. Actually, uh, you know, I'm also a starter. I started mm -hmm. last year. I think I've benefited some financial uh, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even the one I planted with 10,000 naira, mm -hmm. see. That does not mean that I spent only ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so I started with ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Bought chemicals and as a starter. Least after that first one, mm. I was able to make like fifty thousand. Okay, from the ten thousand. Yeah. Wait, uh, okay, like fifty. You said you didn't spend only ten thousand. Yeah. Okay, so it means it works. Yeah, after the whole expenses. Wait, after everything, you're able to make fifty thousand. Everybody should start doing cucumber <laughs> farming. <laughs> I'm serious. Everybody should just start doing this. Yeah, okay, good. don't you think you're going to face co competition if everybody wants to do it now? No, because uh, I want more people to venture into this business. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the reasons I'm organizing a program. Mm -hmm. Like I told you before, I'm mm -hmm. organizing a seminar. I want people to venture into it. Mm -hmm. When people are into this business, mm -hmm. when we have much people into it, mm -hmm. it will attract investors. Mm. Some production manufacturing companies will come in. You know that cucumber can be used to produce cream. Cucumber mm. can be used to produce a lot of things, mm. beverages, drugs, and so the cucumber in Imo State is not even enough for consumption. Wow. Talk more of for industrial purposes. So we want more people to come in, mm. so that uh, uh, um, will not be few 
in in this business. Mm. So that if you are into processing, if you are into production of anything mm. that requires cucumber, you will not have that fear because you are aware that during dry season, mm. the supply of cucumber weed will reduce in your mm. Yes, because of irrigation. Okay. Not everybody has a source of water, so it's a major factor. Mm. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> a source of water is mm. is also a major problem. Lack of source of water, okay. a major problem in mm. business. Because the cucumber, each each stem mm. requires at least a liter of water wow. on a daily basis. So you must water morning and evening mm. during the dry season. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so you actually need people to venture into this business. Of course. So if you're a young person, there is an opportunity in cucumber business in Imo states. We we need you. Let me join. You know, yeah. we we all need you to be a part of cucumber family in Imo states. Yeah. Okay. Now aside cucumber, eh, let's go first. A step further into agriculture. You know, when you talk about cucumber farmers, some people think it's not like you know for young people they don't think he's um, physically befitting that a young fine boy like you is a cucumber farmer or a young fine girl like you can be a cucumber farmer. You understand that? You know how we like very beautiful flashy things. So do you think cucumber farming can be, is not something somebody can actually be bold to front? Like, are you bold to front and say, ah, I'm a cucumber farmer? Of course. I, 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 I am a proud Ngopala cucumber farmer. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm the producer of Ngopala cucumber. Ah, you see. Yeah, that. I am the producer. Wow. So, I am proud of what I do. So if you are not like I had already said, mm. commitment, mm. dedication, mm. and make sure you venture into business you mm. like doing. Uh, so my passion for cucumber did not start now. Wait, I'm excuse me, you said somebody brought you into cucumber farming. Yeah. So before then, do you even like doing this? Thing? I'm a farmer already. My okay. parents are farmers. Everybody's parents somehow are farmers. So that, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that is a, a pedestal. You understand? Yeah. Because in, in Nigeria, yeah. whether you're a subsistence farmer or a commercial farmer, you yeah. understand? We are somehow farmers. Everybody, you're farming something. Yeah. I'm already a farmer, but not a cucumber farmer. <laughs> okay. So, I, why cucumber farmer is, is, a, is kind of um, trending mm -hmm. is because I am using it for economic benefit. I'm using it for financial gain. How many people have you trained so far in your business that, are, that have farms doing, going on right now in the state? Yeah, I've, I've trained up to five persons wow. since I started. I think one of them is currently not practicing mm. at somewhere at the rate. Mm. Yeah, you talk about um, what's that his name? You talk about Kenneth. Mm. He's an undergraduate of uh, Federal University of Technology. Mm. I think I've met him. Okay, he's currently into that business now. Wow. At the yeah, one other boy I trained is from, um, I've forgotten his name, Ifani, I think. Ifani is from Olo. Mm -hmm. So he's waiting for the rainy season to start. Wow. So many of them are waiting for the rainy season to start. And they will venture into it. Have you, do you, employ, have you employed um, anybody so far doing this business? In my business? Yes. Yes, I have contract staff. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't I, really... I, wait, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, like, I have contract. Con Contract laborers. Oh. <laughs> Let me not use the word staff. <laughs> That's why. Because I don't know the area you are seeing. See how my eye just. <laughs> contract laborers. In the sense that I show them particular work to do for me, they do, and they go. Wow. So That's I don't have permanent staff. So, but the way I'm seeing my business, I think I. You will get to that point. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's beautiful. Okay, so well, let's talk about agriculture. You know, I wanted to encourage some young people out there, you know, actually watching us right now. Do you think all the opportunities in agriculture are being tapped by young people? And how do you think they can venture and start, you know, taking advantage of all these wonderful opportunities that abound in agriculture? Um, I come again, sorry. Okay, I said, eh, okay. we're talking about, I said that some of the opportunities that are abound in agriculture, whether cucumber farming, okay. piggery, poultry, you know, they are too much. Yeah. And it's like young people are not taking advantage of this. Okay. You know, some of them just go to some, like, okay, oh. everybody plants um, rare chicks. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah. how can they take advantage of all these opportunities? Yes, I am encouraging young people like me mm. to 
come into agriculture, mm -hmm. whether cucumber or any other type of agriculture, mm -hmm. because there is money in agriculture. Um, you know, our people are interested in the area of businesses that may fetch them a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know, because in farming, whether poultry, whether mm -hmm. degree, whether you are, you know, the um, the yield mm. or the interest grows. It grows. It's not like maybe when you start a business today, tomorrow you become a billionaire. Mm. So it's something that grows. But so, but a lot of our use, a lot of our people, uh, I'm not uh, uh, exceptional. Mm. We are interested in uh, um, any opportunity that can give us better money mm. and maybe hundred times results. Mm. So uh, that is why many people are neglected. And apart from that too, so many people are scared because you know we are in a situation where everybody is struggling for himself. Mm. So many people know assistance mm. from anywhere. Okay. So but if maybe some of our people can be encouraged. Okay. Maybe that through government or mm. any other means. I think people will have interest okay. in venture. And some of them who are scared. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's it. If there is anything you can take from Mr. Williams, it's a fact that you need commitment. You understand? You need commitment to venture into Kukumba. In fact, you need commitment in every area of your life. And you just have to, you know, learn to start small. Learn to start and remove shame. You mustn't be so big. Just start with it, and you're going to have a wonderful time venturing into Kukumba farming. It's, it's yielding results. Like the that young guy I was talking about, I actually met him, and he's doing so well. He has some people he employed working for him, and so he, he's doing so well for himself. So, so you too can do well for yourself if you venture into agriculture, especially in Kukumba farming, especially in the East here, because we don't have a lot of them out there. My name is okay. If I just say my name, don't mind me. You know my name. Let me thank you so much for coming. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams, for coming so on the show. I hope to see you maybe some other time. Yes, <laughs> and I'm inviting people to my seminar, seminar. on the 27th of March. Okay. 27th of March, by 9 a.m., I'll be organizing a seminar okay. at Centero Hotel okay. along Imo Airport Road mm. okay, no by problem. 9 a.m. Okay, so no problem. We will be there. Okay. We will be there. Don't commercialize our program. We will be there. We'll come to support you. <laughs> and that's it on the discussion segment of Generation Next TV show. After now, the Vox Pop segment comes on air. Do stay tuned. We're not done yet. Vox segment. Today we're going to be talking about a very, very interesting topic. And the question is, would you rather take up a career in agriculture over a white collar job and why and today we're going to be interviewing a plethora of guests and we want to know their opinion what do they think about agriculture a lot of people feel that oh agriculture is too messy it's too dirty no i really cannot do that but on the show today you came across a young man who made million naira and the question is would you rather prefer agriculture over a white collar job and why stay tuned then while we interview a lot of people just to get their opinions and views as regards this you don't want to go nowhere personally i would prefer agriculture a lot of problem the problem we have in nigeria is that a lot of people think agriculture is all about just planting and harvesting agriculture has a lot more things involved in it the part of agriculture I prefer is the part of livestock, livestock yeah. animals, livestock, it's, it's used a lot. The cattle rear, as you see, all the headsmen, the money they get, we don't actually know, but it's used a lot. Yeah. Personally, I have a farm. I have a farm for dogs and I also have a farm for livestock, um, the hen, the birds, poultry. poultry. So the money I realize in a, in a year, I know where it goes. Like. Even if I stay in the office and work, I won't get that money. That's right. But I just, and from there, I actually get money to pay workers. I don't do the hard labor by myself. But it yields a lot for me. Okay. So I prefer agriculture. To work. I prefer agriculture to a white collar job. With reasons being that, going back into memory, or rather history, an African man is a farmer. Right now, it is not fashionable among the youths. 
I would say Nigerian youth are not reasonable. A white collar job, a white collar job. When you get a white collar job, how secure are you? You could be sacked at any time. Very correct. Being a farmer, you could be an employer of labor, you could have people working under you, you could support your economy. A wise man once said, agriculture plus youth make a better country. I prefer a white collar job to agriculture. My reasons being the fact that white collar jobs, you know, you go in the morning, you are able to come back and do whatever you have to do. Agriculture is very time investing and for me, after leaving university, I don't feel I'd be comfortable with like dedicating all my time, all my spare time to like the very industrial life of being an agriculturalist. Yeah, so that's my reason. Also, another reason being the fact that when you are earning from a white collar job, the price is fixed. In agriculture, most times when probably the income you're getting is way lesser than what you're spending because you have to spend a lot. Most times the markets, things can depreciate. The animals can die, the plants can die, and then your income for that, you know, that season it's gone. is gone. Yeah. Exactly. So with a white collar job, your income, you know, is steady. If you're working with a good organization, than earning from agriculture. In my own point of view, I rather prefer a white collar job than agriculture. If I didn't pass through the system of university, and uh -huh, I would say, okay, I'll go to agriculture. But you know, whatever the, the society, what the society has put on people, you not having something to do after um, education and all of that, and going back to, it feels like uh, you didn't really pass through anything. Thank you so much for that Vox Pop segment from David Mokori. And I'm so happy from what the young people are saying that they're actually embracing agriculture. And I think you should also do that. Anyway, Generation Nest is still on. The Word for the Week segment comes up right now. Keep watching. You are welcome to the quotes of the week segment of Generation Nest TV show. And the first quote for this week says, Inaction breeds doubt and fear. Action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit at home and think about it. Go out and get busy. The organic and American business icon. And from his words, for every young person watching Generation Nest TV show, just bear it in mind that, your fear and your, you know, doubt has nothing to help in your road to success. If you actually want to get your job done, get your dreams brought to reality, get busy, get out of your house and start doing something. And before you know it, your dream turns to a reality. A dream does not become a reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination and hard work. Colin Powell, former U.S. Defense Secretary. And from Colin Powell's words, without determination, as in without making efforts, physical efforts, mental efforts, academical efforts, psychological efforts, spiritual efforts, your dream will not become a reality. It will just exist in your mind. It will become a mirage. So you have to take sweat to make your dream turn to a reality. And finally, on the quotes for today, Hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. Tim Nock, a basketball coach. Hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. So no matter the amount of talent you have, if you don't work hard, someone without a talent but is ready to put in so much effort and time might actualize your dream. Why you, with the talent, may not get to whatever height you wish to get to. And that's it for the quote of this week on Generation Nest TV show. Yes, I hope you enjoyed the quote for the week segment. And there's one word I'm going to take from there to you as we're leaving. It's the particular one that said, hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work out. So no matter the kind of talent you have, no matter how gifted you are, you are if you do not work hard as a young person, my dear, 
the person with hard work but without talent is going to get his or her own dream to reality while you're there being a spectator. And that's it from all of us here on this edition of Generation Next TV Show. My name is Esther Andrew Maj, and on behalf of the production crew and everyone is good afternoon and ensure you keep watching Generation Next TV Show and more of our programs on Orient Television. Good afternoon and bye-bye. <laughs>